Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome not to a new playthrough but a new feature we're gonna do a paint through yes that's what all these miniatures are doing in front of us here so what exactly am I trying to achieve here well you know what I've got loads of paints and I really enjoy painting miniatures and I haven't had much time to do it so I thought I would combine it with actually doing a playthrough. I'll do a paint through first, then a playthrough. Now, I have painted a few miniatures. If you've seen some of my previous playthroughs, you may have spotted a few, especially in Descent. I painted quite a few of the heroes in Descent. I didn't do the monsters, but I did the heroes. I was, I did the heroes as well for Zombicide Black Plague, and I've also painted a few of the heroes and a few of the monsters for Shadows of Brimstone. But I sort of got out of it, and the reason for that was like Zombicide Black Plague. Uh, and it's the nature of the game, really. In Zombicide Black Plague, you're obviously fighting off a horde of zombies. Now, once I'd done the heroes, I started on the zombies. But the thing is, you can't sort of do a few at a time because you're getting attacked by a horde of zombies. So really, you need them all painting. So I did try to paint them all, and that was a big mistake. I managed to prime them all, and I started painting them all, and then I just there was just too many. You know how many zombies there are, and abominations, and all sorts in Zombicide Black Plague. And I sort of got overwhelmed. So that was a bit of a schoolboy error on my part. I will get back and do it eventually, but uh, I thought, if we're going to start something new, then let's start with a new game as well. Just got the King's Pledge for Conan. Typically, as soon as I bought the King's Pledge off eBay, they did another Kickstarter for Conan the Conqueror, I believe it's called, which I've uh, backed. But uh, that did have King's Pledges in it, and very cheap ones as well. There was only a limited amount, though, so I might not have been able to get one. So that's, that's the way I'm looking at that. But anyway... New Conan the Conqueror, new scenarios, new models, and uh, a new sort of uh, solo play variant that I'm very interested in. Uh, I'm going to use the old solo play variant when I get through to the playthrough after we've painted these. But uh, you never know, the new one might have come through by then. And, you know, they might have released it on the Kickstarter for us all to have a look at. If it if it does, then I'll use uh, the new variant that they're supposedly doing. But as it is, back to the paint through. Now, problem I had with Black Plague, I'm not going to have with Conan here. Because Conan is in scenarios. So I'm just going to paint the models I require for the scenario that I'm going to play through at a later date. And the scenario I'm going to play through at a later date is in the clutches of the pit and this is the recommended one to start with now in the clutches of the picks Conan and a couple of his friends have been feed to go and rescue the daughter of the local governor the, the daughter's called Iselda and uh, we're actually going to use a mini for Iselda you don't have to but uh, this mini here this is uh, the princess also Thalia and uh, she's going to double up for Yazelda, so we're going to paint her. We're obviously going to paint Conan, because he's the main man, and uh, his name's on the box. Uh, the other heroes we're going to be painting are Shavatas, who's a sort of thief character, and a magic unit user called Hadrathus. So there he is with a fireball going on. We're also going to paint Belit. Now, she is only an optional for this particular scenario but what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to paint her because in the next scenario she is actually required so she is an optional for in the clutches of the picks but the next scenario she is required so I may as well paint her now so I'm going to paint Bullet as well what is a scenario without baddies? nothing so we're going to paint the baddies as well the sort of main leader of the baddies is this chap, he's called Zogar Sag, and he's a disciple of the beast god Jebal Sag. So uh, he's kidnapped this governor's daughter, and he's holding her captive, and Conan and his friends are going to try and rescue her, so we're going to paint him. Uh, part of his beast army, he has some hyenas. Now, there are five of these, so we're going to paint these bad boys, and... He's also 
because we're in the clutches of the Picts. Jebal Sag, uh, sorry, Zogar Sag, he is a Picked priest of Jebal Sag. So he's got picked friends. These are picked warriors. There are five of these, and they wield massive sledgehammers, as you can see. And we have a whole host of these chaps. These are picked hunters, and there are 15 of these. So I'm going to show you how to batch paint those. So those are the picked hunters, and I'm sure you've been waiting to see this chap. Yes. This is uh, Zolgar Sag's pet, it's a giant snake, and we're also going to have a lot of fun painting him. So won't he look good on the table once he is done, so we'll pop him there. So these are the only miniatures we will require for this scenario. It's about 20 odd miniatures, because obviously a few of them, actually about 30, but it's okay. It's not like Zombicide where there was about 300. So uh, we'll paint these guys. And uh, then we will do a playthrough of Conan and in the clutches of the picks. So I just wanted to show you the things that we're going to be painting. As regards painting itself, just have a quick chat about that. Now, I am no master painter by any means, and that's not the point of this paint through. It's just to show you that even if you've got limited talent and horrendous eyesight, because... I paint with these and I'm also going to have to use one of these <laughs> which is like a jeweler's loop in order to be able to see so even with my limited talent and appalling eyesight you can paint miniatures good enough to go on your tabletop that you will not be embarrassed about you'll think hey you know what they look pretty good all you've got to do is follow some simple steps um, I'll show you where the differences are between you know, a, a, a decent, okay hobby painter for tabletop and these guys, you know, we get crystal brushes and golden demons. I'll just show you the sort of extra sort of things that they go through because not only do they have immense talent, they really do like spend a lot of time on these. Time that we're not going to spend. It's easy to get them good enough to look good on your tabletop. You will be looking at them from basically from the uh, as far away as you are now yeah it's about two feet from the lens of this camera to the table here and this is about as near as you're going to get most of the time so you don't have to go to you know real intense detail on these miniatures to make them look good a few simple steps you do it in the right order you will get stuff that is really good and will look good on your table and is plenty good enough to uh, play a game with and it'll look much better than having grey plastic down there so that's what I'm attempting to show if you want to watch some really excellent painters well there's millions out there on, on YouTube but one I'd recommend is called Sir Astro uh, I'll put his name down, down there he does a lot of tabletop minis and uh, you know the sort of games that I play as well like things like Descent and Zombicide and, and, and stuff like that he's so full of good tips but he's also amazing go and watch him and uh, you will pick up loads and loads of tips and hints that will improve your painting no end he helped me and uh, he's a guy with real real talent go go and watch that if, you, if you're really interested in mini painting and you really want to learn how to really do it but if you're like me and just want to bang these out so you can have a quick game afterwards then you're okay here so these are the types of miniatures we're going to be painting we're only going to be painting uh, Conan to start with we're not going to do start that this episode uh, I'm just going to go through some of the general stuff first and then we will start with Conan next episode okay so what sort of stuff do you need well apart from the miniatures which you're going to paint you need paint now I use I'll just grab one here I've just got a massive set of army painter paints. These are proper miniature acrylic paints. There are lots of other types. Um, army painters, just one company. Everybody will have heard of Citadel, for example, by Game Workshop. There's Vallejo paints, there's Privateer Press paints, there's all sorts of paints. Do buy proper miniature paints. You can get acrylic paints in um, you know, hobby shops and stuff. 
but they're not really meant for miniatures you are better getting these these are specially made for miniatures and they will do a better job you can use the other acrylic paints if you wish and you'll get decent results with them but if you want you know good results go with these sort of paints these are specifically for miniatures so I'll pop those back so you've got your miniatures you've got your paints you also require brushes now brushes are a bit odd in miniature painting because really uh, for the level that I'm going for you only need one really excellent brush you're going to do the vast majority of your painting with one single brush so that should be your excellent brush and uh, I've bought one and it is a turn it the right way around it is a Raphael and um, it's an 8404 it's uh, natural fibers so that is actually sable in there and as you can see it's got just take the protector off always use the protectors it's got a really nice tip yeah on it and the good thing about it having a really nice tip is that you can actually do finer detail this is um, a size one but you can actually do a bit better than that with it you can go a bit finer because it has such an excellent tip these are a bit more expensive because it does have natural fibers but the natural fiber means it keeps the tip better if you look after your brush I'll talk about that in a bit then this will last you a long time if you go onto YouTube and have a look at the really professional painters they will tell you that a brush like this looked after could last for about two years and those guys are painting all the time yeah I'm not painting all the time I'm hoping this will last me about four or five years so if you look after it it'll last a long time bit expensive this cost me about oh, 12 13 pounds just for a single brush but if you look after it it's gonna you'll be able to tell you'll be able to tell it's a, it holds paint better it covers your miniature better and uh, you'll probably be using something like this most of the time and you'll see me using this one most of the time can use other brushes which are not quite as good I've got a few here that I've got with zombie side black plague so army painter ones um, I've got a small dry brush a insane detail brush a detail brush and what is it a small dry brush these will come in they're not quite as good as that Raphael but again these will last a long time and they're good these are actually made by army painter for miniature painting they are they are good enough so I'll be using those occasionally I've also got a Citadel uh, brush starter brush here which is okay to start with that'll keep you going for a bit not as good as the Raphael again eventually it will go but don't get rid of old brushes never get rid of old brushes because they will always come in you'll there'll be lots of techniques and things we'll be doing where you don't want to use your good brush an example of that is dry brushing and uh, this is a, a sort of dry brush as you can see it's now to shout about it's a bit manky um, I'm actually going to use this for priming um, because it's got it's nice and wide it'll I'll get a lot of primer on it and I'll be able to paint these guys I'll talk about why I'm actually brushing primer on shortly but I can use this for dry brushing as well and when you're dry brushing you start doing this with very little paint on your brush it's going to ruin it yeah so use a crap brush don't use your good one use a crap one you can get these from hobby stores uh, they're not um, the man-made fiber normally nylon and uh, they're plenty good enough so if you're going to do you know if you're putting a load of paint on for what reason like you're priming or you're dry brushing or you're, you're even un undercoating that sort of thing just use a crappy brush like that it's uh, nylon fibers but they're plenty good enough you don't want to ruin your good brush I've got a set here that I got off Amazon these are all nylon brushes again they're plenty good enough yeah you don't need the excellent brush I'd recommend the excellent brush but you can get away with these as well so long as you look after them and you're not painting millions of minis yeah they'd be good enough if you want to um, I mean these cut that um, Raphael brush cost 12 quid all these cost 12 quid <laughs> these were 12 quid as a bunch but they're excellent yeah they're well good enough for that um, I've got some insane details in here I've got some larger ones in, in case I need a bit more coverage so 
use these you're not going to use them very often if you're just doing the tabletop standard that I'm doing and they'll last the last ages as long as you look after them so I've got those as well and there are some crazy brushes I also have which you wouldn't think of uh, for example I have a makeup brush not for makeup I'm sorry to disappoint you all but um, I use this for dry brushing as well especially if it's a really big model like that one and uh, there is a technique called it's, it's sort of underbrushing it's called and uh, this is very good for that as well so because it's just huge and uh, you can really cover a big model in very little time and it only costs a quid you just go into a pound shop and uh, buy one of these you may get looked at strangely you may not depends which pound shop you go in but uh, yes excellent and you know once it knackers up dead easy you just bin it get another one easy okay -do. oh another brush i tend to use. this is another crap brush that um i got from like a pound shop but this i use for shades as you see it's got a nice part in it but um once you put it in the wall street it all goes Bleh. but um shades or inks that you use for shading your miniatures uh that's a very sort of runny medium and uh, if you get a big brush like this and you tend to slap it on as well so get a big brush like this to do it and uh, you'll cover your miniature a lot easier you don't have to bother about when you're using inks or washes you generally don't have to bother about being too careful and you can just sort of splash it all over like brute so we'll put that over there okay so that's the brushes i've quickly gone through those what other sort of things do you need well you need palettes now everybody will have seen a palette like this it's just a plastic palette um good for acrylics don't use this too often i am going to use it for priming because priming you're just putting a load of paint onto your miniatures so I will be using this, but generally I won't use this when we get down to the actual painting of the miniature. I will use this. This is called a wet palette. And uh, you see it's got a sheet of special paper on the top there. It's just baking paper, yeah? And the what baking paper does is um, it allows your paint to sit on top of it while underneath as you can see there's an absorbent cloth underneath and there's also some sponge this will all be wet so all this will be water in there wet this through and then you put the baking paper on the top and the baking paper sort of allows the water to come through but not too much and then you put your acrylic paint on here and it won't dry out because the water from beneath is keeping it moist and uh, now you you see some um, things about wet palettes and they say oh you could keep it for weeks that's not strictly true um, you do have a lid there's a lid under here and you can put the lid on that will generally keep your paints fresh for a few hours yeah so if you're going to be painting all day use your wet palette when you go for you know something to eat or a drink or whatever or you're taking five minutes put the lid on all your paints that are on here will stay fresh you may get away with it over 24 hours any longer than that i wouldn't recommend the reason being is all paints are mixes that's why you have to shake them like billy o before you start using them and uh, there's particulate in there which is the pigment and there's the medium that it's in yeah so you shake it up then you can use it everybody's seen paint where it hasn't been shaken up and it separates into two layers there's a layer of the pigment and then there's the layer of the medium and uh, that will happen on your palette if you leave it for too long so it'll stay wet but the paint won't be as good because it'll separate out now you can mix it up with your brush again but you, it's not really as good as giving it a good shake so the paint isn't as good so I wouldn't recommend leaving your paint for any longer than 24 hours on one of these. Some people do, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, especially paints like metallics. The metallics have extra particulates in. They have the pigment, but they also have the, um, the little shiny particulates that actually make it look like metal. And uh, those, because obviously it's a lot heavier, those 
those particles are a lot heavier they will separate out very quickly so even on a on a pallet on a wet pallet you know they're going to separate out separate out pretty quickly and uh, they're not going to be very good but if you're going to be painting especially batch painting miniatures being able to keep your paints wet for a couple of hours save you a fortune if you used a normal palette like the one I showed you before your paint would just dry out yeah and you'd be using more and more and you go through your paints which are expensive they're pretty expensive you go through them too quick so do use a wet palette you'll see me using this when we actually get to base coating so I'll put that out of the way over here what else do we use water so just use some water to yes wash your brushes in I recommend using two of these I've got two of these one is for normal paint the other one is for metallic paints the reason is those metal particles I tell, told you about if you use the same water those metal particles when you're painting with normal paint you'll go and wash your brush off and some of those metal particles will probably get on your brush then you dip it in the paint they get into the paint you know it's not a great deal of uh, cross transfer but a bit it's just best keep your metallic paints in a metallic in a metallic um, wash and uh, use another use uh, another pot of water for washing your normal paints i find that helps uh, i've also got a dropper full of water even on a wet palette i find that uh, when you put out a bit of paint uh, put a drop of water with it just to thin it out um, using paint straight from the pot tends to be a little too thick and um, because you're painting miniatures they've got a lot of lovely detail on them you don't want to lose that detail yeah so if you put the paint on too thick you will lose the detail thin your paint out if you have to put a second coat on so be it they're only they're only tiny won't take you long sometimes you'll even be putting three sort of thin layers on and your miniature will look a lot better for it always thin your paints yeah so you'll see that again when i start base coating and uh, actually painting the minis and what else do i have water use it to clean your brushes but you also need something else to clean your brushes that i highly recommend and it's this stuff looks like a bar of soap doesn't it that's because it is a bar of soap but this is special brush soap <laughs> this is specially made for cleaning brushes and what you'll do is once you've finished for the day take your brush wash it out in the water but then also put it in here get a good lather up on the bristles of your brush then wash it again yeah and uh, when your brush is clean but uh, damp just turn it just turn the bristles in here and you'll get a nice sharp point on your on your brush and uh, leave that till next time because the soap will sort of like harden and it'll keep your brush in um, nice condition then when you come to use it next time just use the water to dampen it and all that soap will dissolve and you've got a nice clean brush ready to dip in some paint do use this stuff it will keep especially your expensive brush the one made out of sable fibers it will keep it in tip-top condition it also helps the nylon brushes as well and uh, the longer you have them you don't have to replace them do you so always use brush soap it's excellent stuff put that over there and what else oh yes about cleaning brushes when you're cleaning brushes just uh, and painting in general don't get any paint over this metal bit the metal bits called the ferrule don't get any paint there the reason is it'll get under the ferrule into the bristles where it connects and it'll ruin your brushes yeah so when you're painting try and keep your paint you know to the top third of your brush try and avoid getting it on here and uh, when you're washing your brush then you'll have no problems if you do get some on there you know it's not the end of the world you can wash it off just don't do it all the time yeah because it gets in there and it'll ruin your brush okay let's get off brushes and uh, let's talk about there are other tools that i'll use as well you'll see me using during this paint through uh, first of all we use one of these which is a craft knife 
and we use this to get rid of flash off the models. Flash is the sort of plastic, that uh, extraneous plastic on the model. It might come through as mould lines, you know, a mould sticks together and then they inject plastic into it, you open it up and uh, there's your nice looking miniature but there might have been some seepage into the sides of the mould so you get something called mould lines you also get flash and uh, it's where the plastic's injected and uh, there might be a little nub of plastic yeah you just use these to like scrape that off you can either use a craft knife which I use most of the time other things you can use is we're going back to the ladies aisle this is one of those nail file things and uh, that's good for because uh, they're really fine and um, you can sort of sandpaper down any rough edges off your miniatures with those. You also get these metal things. They're more for sort of woodworking than anything. But uh, occasionally you do need a bit more. And uh, I've got one of those. Other sort of tools that you can also use are these flat clippers. See how they're flat there? Now these miniatures here, they're sort of like uh, pre-done. Yeah, they're all set up, they're all on bases, but it's not unusual to get miniatures that are on sprues and you've got to assemble them yourself and it's great just to have a pair of these. You can clip them off and uh, get to assembling and they're nice and flat there and you can just use them to make a nice cut. Occasionally, even on these miniatures down here, you'll get a big blob of plastic and uh, rather than messing around with a file, if you've got a pair of these, you can just whip it off with these. Doesn't happen often, but if it does, you've got a pair of those. We also have a selection of glues, for example, super glue and normal wood glue here. That's generally used in basing. On the base here, you can actually, you can just paint it like black if you wanted and just leave it at that but some people put uh, basing materials on the bottom to make it a bit more realistic I do myself and uh, wood glue and um, super glue they're great for just making it adhere on there talking of basing materials for example here is some sand and you put the glue on the base then you dip it into here and you'll get a nice sandy base then you'll put some more of the wood glue on top of that because uh, even though it's white wood glue when it dries it dries clear so put some more wood glue on the top that seals it in then you can paint over that if you wish or if it looks okay you can you can leave as is it's up to you but uh, other sort of things you can use are for example there's model makers flock you'll see you'll see that on you know train sets you know, that's the sort of stuff they use for making trees and grass and things like that. And uh, in this hobby, it lasts. It lasts. That will last me forever. You know, if I was just putting a little tuft on each one of these bases, it would last me an absolute lifetime. So I've got a few different colours of that. Um, I've got um, various types of grit. Um, a lot of this, you can just go out and... Uh, you can get it from your backyard. One thing I will say though, if you do do that, do wash it and then put it in the oven to dry it out. Don't want any like, you know, horrible like germs or bugs coming into your house. Um, or you can just buy it, yeah. You'll buy it at any sort of model shop, I'll have that sort of stuff. I've also got some cork here and uh, I use that for big sandstone like boulders does really good in fact if you've seen my shadows of brimstone miniatures you'll see a couple of them have got these so uh, that's good to use as well and I've got various bits of slate and crap like that that I've got for it doesn't cost much you can just go and get a job lot of it and uh, that's used for basing material as well as that I've also got a set of corks what I use these for is I generally put a big blob of blue tack on and then you can stick your miniature to the blue tack like that and then you can actually paint it without getting paint everywhere yeah so that's another good tip you can get corks like that you can get them for pound shop is your friend again just go they sell them for you know the, for wine makers and brewers but uh, you get a mass a quid and you get about you know 16 of these yeah same with blue tack you get a big uh, slab of blue tack for about a quid that'll do you 
anything else that I use. Um, I have a couple of these that just like spreaders for the glue, uh, but they're also useful for mixing paint occasionally. You have to give paint a, you know, if you're mixing colours, you can just give them a mix with this rather than use your brush if you wish. And uh, permanent marker. What do we use a permanent marker for? Occasionally, Kickstarters have millions of minis, and it can be a little difficult keeping track of what's what. Now, Conan, everybody knows who Conan is, easy. But for example, these guys, you might forget that they were called Picked Hunters. What I generally do is I'd go underneath and I'd just put PH on the bottom there. Occasionally what I do, and I've done it with Descent, because you've got loads and loads of different expansions, I've actually um, put what the expansion is as well, that they come from. So uh, it can be very useful, just pop it, up, pop it on the bottom of the base and then you know where your mini comes from. And I think that is pretty much it. Oh yes, I've got some, uh, I've got some spray primer. I'm not using that because the weather is absolutely appalling in Britain right now. In fact, it's generally appalling all the year round. So I will be uh, painting the primer on. I'll go through that in a second. But spray primers you can use. And uh, you can also use spray varnishes. Generally, I use matte varnish because if you use a gloss varnish, then uh, you're just going to get a very shiny miniature. Sometimes you want that. Uh, you may have a slimy, horrible monster that you want to look slimy, in which case, you know, give it a gloss finish. But generally, we'll be giving these guys a matte finish, so I've got some matte varnish, and uh, that just protects the mini. You don't have to use it, but if you're going to be using it on the tabletop like I am, they're going to get bashed around a bit, so I would recommend that you use some sort of lacquer on the mini when you finish. You know, if you're a professional painter, you're going for a crystal brush or a golden demon, they don't need, they're going to stick theirs in a, in a cabinet. They're not going to use them. <laughs> so they won't need any uh, lacquer on their minis. But us, we play with our minis, so we're going to be using lacquer. And uh, that's pretty much it for the bits and bobs that we'll be using. You'll see my, you'll see my using them as we paint these minis. Okay, what are those steps that I talked about? to get in a decent looking mini to the table. Well, first of all, you've got preparation. I mentioned it a bit there where I was showing you a craft knife. We have to get rid of things like mold lines and injection marks. Now, it's up to you how, you know, how, how much you go into that. If you have a look at Conan here, he's got a slight mold line on his shoulder. It was a lot worse than that. I've actually already done him. I've done all the miniatures actually, they've all been, um, I've done them all for flash and mold lines. You could really get into it, you know, and spend hours doing this sort of stuff. But as so long as it doesn't stick out like dog's balls when you paint them, you know, to that level is good enough for me. I'm happy with that. Uh, there was also a bit of an injection mold on his thigh here. I don't know if you can see that. But um, again, I've... Uh, I sort of knocked that back with a craft knife and then I sanded it down a bit and uh, that'll be fine once we cover it. It'll be primed, then it'll be base coated and uh, we shouldn't be able to see it. So uh, done that for all the minis. Once you've done, got rid of all your flash and all the mold lines to the level that, you, uh, that you're happy with, what you've got to do with these guys is you've got to wash them in warm soapy water. Why? Well, in order to get these guys out of the moulds, they have a thing called releasing agent. Because what they don't want, they don't want to open the mould and then not being able to get the miniature out because it's stuck in there. So they put chemicals in the mould that uh, allow the mini just to pop out when the mould opens. But that chemical gets onto, gets onto the mini, obviously. And uh, they just ship it out. So these minis will have a certain amount of releasing agent on them. The bad thing about releasing agent is it's very slippy because it's the nature of the beast. If it's very slippy, you'll find it very hard to put paint on the miniatures. You'll also find it hard to put primer on the miniatures because it'll just slide off. But it's dead easy to get rid of. Warm soapy water, duck them in, get yourself an old toothbrush. I'm quite lucky, I've got an old battery operated toothbrush, you know, with a small head. That's brilliant. 
If you could get one of those from a pound shop, you know, a battery operated one, a real crap one, get one of those because it does all the hard work for you. The bloody end of it spins like buggery and you just go like that and it just takes seconds. Bit of warm soapy water, seconds, give them a quick buzz with the, your toothbrush and then all you do is rinse them off. Rinse them off, allow them to dry, all that releasing agent has gone, they're ready to paint. I've done that with all of these, they're all ready, that preparation step is done and uh, they are ready now for primer. I'm going to leave it here, when I come back with the next episode it will be Conan, so say goodbye to these guys, they won't come back till later, later episode. We'll come back with Conan, I'll just do a brief recap on preparation, then we'll get into priming and then we'll go into the other steps. The other steps are the base coat, we'll base coat the miniature, then because they're only tiny they need definition. Yeah, so the base coat isn't enough. We need to enhance the shadows and we need to enhance the light areas on the mini. So we base coat, then we shade. The shade will take the form of a wash or an ink and that will run into all the crevices on the miniature and it will um, it, it extenuates the shadows of the miniature. Then we'll do something called highlight. When we do the wash on a miniature, it tends to dull the whole miniature. As well as getting to the crevices, it, it, it tends to dull the miniature as a whole. So we'll use the base coat again, but we won't go right into all the crevices this time. We'll just touch up the mini, make sure it's not dull anymore, bring those colours back. And then, fine, and then what we'll do after that, not finally, what we'll do after that is we'll do another highlight. We'll take the base coat or another shade of that, that colour that's slightly lighter and uh, we'll go over the places like the tops of the shoulders, the tops of the head, the top of the, the edges of the sword, all the places that you'd expect to be hit by light if you were outside and uh, that will extenuate the um, light hitting the miniature. And what this does is it makes it look more realistic because it's so small it doesn't create its own shadow or its own light as much so we've got to help it with the paint and that will make it really pop on the table. The If you're a real professional miniature painter this is where your talent really comes in because they, those guys can highlight and highlight and highlight and they make these things really pop. We don't have to do that, we don't have the time, we don't have the talent, well I don't. So we're just going to make it look good enough from three feet away and uh, just doing a base coat, a shade, a highlight and then a further highlight, that's plenty good enough. You'll see it and you'll go, you know what, that looks good on my table. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed in that. It looks better than the grey plastic. It looks cool. Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. And finally, you get to our last step, which is basing and finishing. Generally, there's a lot of real detailed, um, in fact, he's not a good example. Bellet is a good example. As you can see, she's just covering her modesty with stuff like jewellery. And that's really fine detail. And that's the sort of stuff that you'll be doing in this final step. Just going in, making sure the fine detail shows, uh, doing things like jewellery on the miniature, all the really tiny, tiny stuff will do that during this stage. And what we'll also do is we will do the basing. So that basing that I talked around, we'll do that. Now you can do that before priming if you wish, and the primer will help whatever you put on the base stick on. I prefer to do it at the end, but you can do it at the beginning because we're actually going to varnish it. Um, that's, that's fine, that'll help the base material stay on. But you can do it before the priming stages if you wish. Um, it depends how good it looks. Because sometimes you just put like sand on a base and um, you don't paint it. But funnily enough, it doesn't look good. It looks good if you actually prime it and then paint it like it's a miniature. Because remember, you've got to extenuate the shadows and the light. So sometimes it works. It depends on the basing material. 
sometimes you don't have to paint it sometimes it's better to paint it generally i do it at the end because remember we're not going for a crystal brush or a golden demon as long as it looks good we don't give a toss so i do my basing at the end once that's done we seal it with a coat of matte varnish and it's ready to go it's ready to play fantastic and that is what we're going to do during this series so that is the um, introduction final part of the introduction just before I forget I always forget stuff we are using acrylic gesso which is in a big tub like this why well the weather is horrible in Britain at the moment we're having storm after storm after storm everybody's getting flooded out don't worry I'm not in trouble but uh, plenty of people are when it's like that priming miniatures is a problem because you can't just use a spray can because you've got to go outside don't prime inside kids don't prime with spray cans inside do it outside put a mask on even when you're outside and because it's full of chemicals to make the spray and it's horrible gets inside you yuck yeah so i can't really go outside to spray prime i do have spray primers but can't use them this time of year and uh, but what you can use is acrylic gesso now this is the sort of stuff that you put onto a canvas to prepare it for paint and uh, it works well on minis as well now it's thick gloopy stuff but it's magic it tends to sort of um, it shrinks onto the miniature it's weird now i do um i do use some water to thin it down a little bit but you don't have to use a lot what you'll see when I actually prime Conan in the next episode um, it does look a bit gloopy to begin with but it, it will actually just shrink onto him and it's um, it's amazing stuff so we will use that now it is a bit slower and because we're using a brush we're not just using a spray can but time of year I'm a bit stuck I cannot use my spray primers it's not so bad when you're doing the varnishing at the end because you can sort of nip out yeah the varnishing's very quick shh, like that if you're going to spray prime you're doing a load of miniatures it'll normally take you about half an hour something like that if the weather's crap the like moisture gets into the spray and um, it, it makes a mess and um, your primer doesn't dry properly or, or no no <laughs> so i'm going to be using this stuff so it's going to be a little slower but it does mean that i'll be able to paint these miniatures in february all right so i think that is it now i don't think i'm going to suddenly remember something else that i've got to talk about so thank you for watching this brief introduction uh, it's just an explanation of uh, what this new feature is all about i've gone through a lot of the basics so i don't have to do them when i'm actually doing the miniatures when i come to do conan like next episode i will do the priming for conan and uh, then we'll get on with the base coating and everything else and finish him off every miniature after that you won't even see the priming step because i'm going to prime them at the same time as conan and uh and priming it's just dead easy yeah you don't need to see that again and again and again what you want to see is like the base coat and the colors that i'm going to use and uh, the finishing touches yeah so conan you'll see the priming for him everybody else when it comes to their episode you'll they'll be already primed okay been going on a lot like i normally do so that is it for now hope you enjoyed the new feature um any comments any disagreements with what i'm doing or whatever put them in the comments probably take no notice of you <laughs> but by all means you know if you've got hints and tips of your own do put them into the comments it will be much appreciated uh, let me know what you think of the new well in fact don't don't we haven't actually done anything yet but uh, once i want to do the conan episode let us know what you think of the new feature whether you like it or not again i'll probably carry on doing it anyway but uh, always good to get feedback all right so that is it for the introduction to cat weasel dobbs and uh, he will be dobbing conan next time so until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, saying toodaloo.